Hello, guys, and blessings. Blessed be. Um, I am High Priestess Jamila, and I am here to talk to you guys about possession. Now, I'm going to be using photographs to break this down for y'all, but this is a photograph of orbs in the universe. The fun part about this photograph the amazing thing about this photograph is that a lot of those orbs that you see are actually souls that started in our universe. That's where they're created, in my opinion. In these photographs, and I can't confirm if these are actual orbs, they look like it, but this is typically how a human soul looks. A small orb, okay? Uh, a human soul is this tiny orb. They can range in size, but typically they're no bigger than maybe a dime or a quarter or a quarter dollar. And so the reason why I'm breaking this down as far as with possession is because these are possible energies, entities, spirits that can possess another human being for whatever reason. I'm not going to get into that because that's way too much. I only teach that in my class about possession. Possession can either be random or it can be intentional. If someone knows about necromancy. Now, these little tiny orbs, here's how it relates to the human body and the human soul. This is, I decided to use this photograph. So when you look at this photograph, this is the human body. When you compare and contrast the human body to the size of an orb, possession can and does happen in various parts of the body. So we're going to start with the head. Let's say you're not protected. Let's say something happens, right? And you have no idea you can be somewhere and an orb or a spirit makes contact with the head. There may or may not be symptoms of this right away. The good thing about being an empath is that empaths, why they're so powerful, is because empaths can sense possession very easily, instantly, even before it happens, as well as psychics, okay? So let's say that an orb decided to make contact, which is a spirit, with your head. An empath might get dizzy or have a headache or some other symptom. They may start hallucinating possibly. Uh, they may get angry. They may feel tired. Okay. It can vary. Um, let's say an orb or a spirit may contact with your hand. Okay. And this is not a spirit that you gave permission to touch you. So typically when it comes to our hands, we relate that to hunting and gathering, you know, and money, right? So if a spirit may contact, a negative spirit may contact with your hand, it could possibly block your money. You'll possibly feel blocked. You'll possibly have bad luck, depending on the spirit, okay? 
Now, let's say that a spirit touched your stomach area, okay, which is kind of related. We're talking about chakras here, yes, but if it touches your stomach area, that's typically an area that is connected to the heart as well as the gut as well as the center of your gravity. So that could cause dizziness. It could cause stomach pains. It could cause um, nausea. It, it could, you know, cause you to feel a little self-conscious. Okay. Let's say that a spirit orb was to touch your sacral area. Okay. That may cause, and like I said, it can be intentional or random, could possibly cause you to have blocked fertility. Um, it could cause you to not be in a sexual mood or either be too overly sexual. Okay. So what is the point of this? I'm going to get to the point. Um, in a minute, I want to talk to you guys about the soul. Okay. When and if a bad spirit makes contact with the soul. Okay. Now it can be debated, but I believe that the soul is in the heart, which is the center, which is the heart chakra. That's the soul, okay? I believe that that's where the soul originates. In fact, um, you know, your heart starts beating when you're like three or four weeks gestation in your mother's stomach, okay? Now, the brain forms first, but the heart moves. It's moving. I believe that that's where the soul is formed, okay? That, that may change. But if something, if like a bad spirit was to get into the heart area, then that could possibly cause what? Anxiety, angst, anxiousness, tachycardia, blood pressure problems, you know, uh, chest pains, things of that nature. And so... If you have those spirits that are inside of you like that, then what can happen? Okay. If you don't clear those spirits out of you, then you're going to have a lot of sickness and a lot of misery. Okay. You're not going to feel well. You might go to the doctor and they not know what's wrong with you. And what they're going to do is they're going to tell you that it's anxiety. Typically is what they do. Okay. So this is how possession works. Okay. You can't allow a bad spirit to sit inside of the body and squat. You can't do it because what it will do is it will continue to tear down. In the rest of the time that I have on this video, I want to break down the energy harvesting spirits, uh, monitoring spirits and things of that nature. So typically in order for something to take from your life force, it would have to attach to you. So that can also be a certain spirit that will be small enough, invisible, and not recognizable to you. The only way you can really see orbs is typically under light, typically, okay? It depends on who's looking. <clears throat> so that's where when it comes to mediums and psychics, you know, typically a medium or a psychic is going to be able to see an orb without the light or either sense it, okay? So... That's how you end up being fed upon for various purposes also because someone could have a monitoring spirit uh, that they send out to attach to the body and communicate that energy back. See, communication is all about energy transference. 
you guys are probably wondering, wow, how do you protect yourself from something like that? So there are certain spirits that are either low level, mid level or high level risk to a person. OK, uh, and it just really depends. You know, um, I believe that the way that you essentially get those spirits out of the body is with intention. But then you can also look at the elements, you know, uh, typically earth, air, fire and water, especially fire. Now, are you going to set yourself on fire? No, but you can make an intention. And then also somebody that knows about necromancy, such as myself, is going to know what to do with those particular spirits. Some of them uh, don't go. You'll banish them. They'll come right back. So then you'll have to trap them is what, you know, I've been talking about here lately. And, uh, you know, you can deal with the originator. Sometimes people will send those spirits to you. And it depends on where you're at in the grand scheme of things. Do I feel that possession is always a bad thing? Nope. As somebody that knows a lot about necromancy and witchcraft, it's not always a bad thing, especially if you are defending yourself or if you got a problematic person. And if you are the everyday average Joe that's kind of just like trying to live life and, you know, somebody tries to send you bad spirits, you have every right to banish those spirits. I believe that the closest as far as with religion that can get to banishing bad spirits would be Muslims because they pray five times a day. However, not even that really works. Obviously. Like, it's other things that need to be done to protect yourself as well as to get rid of those spirits. Because is every Muslim disciplined in praying five times per day? Possibly. So... I feel like certain perfumes, certain things, you know, like bottles, jars, even setting an intention to shield yourself, to put an astral shield around yourself. Um, that's something that we're going to be talking about a lot, which is an astral shield, which is something that we should be able to do with our minds. Unfortunately, with the constant agenda that is being carried out around us, even by our own family members, that within itself can be very difficult. You know, we're only using a certain percentage of our brain, all of us, and psychics are using more, empaths are using way more. But for the average person, you're not using more than a certain percentage of your brain. So that is my discussion for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, the only surefire way to know, because uh, a lot of these spirits can come into the body and they can lay dormant for years before they start to show signs that they are even there. Really, the only surefire way of ridding yourself of bad spirits and possession is spiritual cleanses. Okay. Because sometimes <clears throat> they will begin to have an accumulative effect on people. And depending on how lucid they are, because, you know, if a person is always in bad spirits, they're not going to recognize when a really bad spirit. That's why people that are typically, you know, uh, angry and upset and bitter they are more prone to demonic possession. Demonic possession is a little bit different because that's when you find yourself 
possessed by a demon outside of your will. Okay? That's when you are possessed by an outside entity that you don't want that's not serving you, which is a totally different subject, but I will touch on that. Um, you know, demonic possession will typically result in, um, you know, a lot of upset behavior, um, you know, usually typically like a meltdown of some sort, but it doesn't always, sometimes a person can, uh, show signs by being very apathetic. That can be a sign of demonic possession. For me, as a devotee to Lilith, you know, I feel that Lilith protects me from a lot of bad spirits and entities that could possess me <laughs> or my children. So um, I would say that it could be working with a deity, um, you know, or... Um, you know, whatever it is that you feel comfortable with, as long as it's working, whatever it is that you're doing spiritually, if it's not working, it's just not working for you. It just isn't, you know what I mean? Like if it's not showing you some kind of sign that it's going to work, maybe something else needs to be done, but you know, um, so I'm not going to really get into all of that. Um, but that is going to conclude my discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that y'all hit that like button, subscribe and share, and I will see you guys next time. Also, if you guys need to reach me, visit www.divineservicesapothecary.com. All right. Blessings. Bye.